your show in Korea recently. Yeah. Archidims, that uh, is uh, actually much more than a show. It started as a complex research and web project. It did. It started out of my personal interest in finding and collecting sort of more alternative architectural publications, like fanzines, student journals, different magazines that have come up in recent years um, from all over the world. And um, I launched this online as a sort of web showcase back in January 2011 um, as a way of cataloging the publications I had and thinking about how we present this to the public, but at the same time finding out more about the publications that were in places I haven't visited in, 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 in cities around the world. So it was a way of encouraging people to also send in the publications that they had made themselves. Um, and now the exhibition of the publications is on show at the Architectural Association in London um, until the 14th of December. And that presents 60 publications from over 20 countries. And um, it will be interesting to understand from, from your side is like in this moment where everyone is saying, you know, the crisis of crisis and, and so crisis of uh, architecture in, in magazines and, and, and so on. So what you are basically showing actually a total reborn of like so many fanzines and uh, new ideas about photography and architecture, architecture and so on. So do you think the two things are correlated or like actually an answer to that or is a reaction to? Um. But it is a subculture. It's not taking over um, how architecture is communicated. Mm -hmm. it, it's a subculture within the media of architecture. But there are several factors involved. So you have the uh, economic crisis that is going on. And for many architects and creative minds who want to explore ideas, who want to generate their practice in some way to produce printed matter is an affordable or more affordable way of doing this. At the same time, you have um, the internet that just in the last few years has really sort of found its uh, feet as a, as a tool for, for magazines, for, for communication, for images, for video. Um, and so a lot of these new publications are responding to that. Mm -hmm. uh, they are either um, uh, a response against the internet, they want something that's physical, they want something that is, won't just disappear when you click a mouse button and the, the web page goes forever. Um, but at the same time, a lot of them are, are using the internet to either source content, mm -hmm. uh, to promote their work, to attract audiences, and to, to connect with people. So it's also global. Yeah, the, the way you collected the magazines is not like few countries. I guess it is kind of a global phenomenon. And, and yeah. in actually in the traveling of the show, I think you will be able to touch base with this kind of like different realities, no? Totally. The publications come from every corner of the world, from Australia to America, all throughout Europe and Latin America. We have a fantastic publication in Japan and Tokyo. Um, and the exhibition that's in London now will tour in 2012. And what's really exciting is every place we touch down, whether that is in New York or, uh, or other cities around the world, um, it, it's an opportunity for the people behind the publications to come together and gather and discuss what they're doing. Is that, um I understood that uh, one of the interesting uh, curatorial part of this uh, project you worked on is the, the fact that actually the dynamic of the normal like research and then exhibition and then using the web as a communication tool was actually totally reversed. So you actually started the project as an online project and it was kind of like a way of also helping you out on the research, so the show is part of this process, but it's not like an ending part, and it's actually coming after the 
more uh, um, online uh, presence of the product. Absolutely, and as a curator, as you know, your first instinct is make make the show, make the exhibition, um, make something physical that people can see, and that's what I was going to do. Uh, and then um, I decided that there was merit to actually starting online to start um, cataloging and researching the publications on a website that would allow it to grow, that would allow me to learn about how you communicate a magazine to people who wouldn't necessarily pick it up or see it. What do you show? What do you say? And at the same time attract uh, more content, more information. Because I didn't know everything. I, I'm still learning. And every week, almost every day, different publications are contacting me from Africa, from um, everywhere. Um, and so that became the content that fed into the exhibition. Mm -hmm. And the website and the exhibition are just two of the ways that this project is um, becoming public. Yeah. Um, I've gathered this information about publishing activity but it's all happening now, and my curatorial move is to share that. Yeah. Is to let people have access to this um, and form their opinions about what this means. So along with the exhibition and the website, there's a catalogue that's been published by Bedford Press. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, uh, the collection of publications is being transferred to the National Art Library at the Victorian Albert Museum. So um, uh, in the next few weeks, anyone can go to that uh, library and access these publications, many of which have minimal distribution. So it'll be a chance for people to come and really explore the wider collection. It's very interesting as this uh, project has all these different facets and kind of like at the end, kind of like active um, way of promoting. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, using funding, but also yeah. the possibility that people could actually be in touch as uh, your collection become part of the uh, BNA collection. Mm. It's to celebrate and really promote the activity that's happening and allow people to, to explore it, but also hopefully encourage people to get out there and start thinking about the cities and the buildings they live in and maybe try and document them or or be critical about them in, in different ways. And uh, as we met here in Milano now for a seminar about photography, yeah. I understood that your next kind of like interest is about photography and architecture. You already created some shows, but maybe the last thing you could tell us about. Sure. Let's um, uh, research at least uh, a glance. Okay. <laughs> um, well, you mentioned the shows that I've, I've worked on. I curated I shot Norman Foster for the Architecture Foundation in 2005. Um, and I've just curated Concrete Islands in Paris for Annie Ritz Forever in 2011. Um, and this is all from a, again, it starts with a personal interest in photography and how that's used not just to document architecture and the built environment, but to be critical, to, um, to almost act as a research tool about the way we live in, in space. And um, so I'm looking at um, uh, this new generation of, art, of photographers and artists who are using photography as this research tool, as this critical opportunity to, uh, to explore architecture. Very good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. For sure. You curated the yeah. Assembly, Architecting.